amen and amen and amen. I um, I just uh, want to say good morning, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. If you heard something in the background, that's my little my little my little boy, my little favorite boy. His name is uh, Chico. He is just amazing. That's my little dog. Um, that's my little my little partner here. He uh, uh, he's man's best friend. He surely is. Uh, why do I say this? Well, he sounds the shofar. He sounds a shofar. And, uh, you know, the dogs in the, in the animal kingdom are very much in tuned with Abba Father, with our Lord, uh, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua. They are very in tune with him. And so, yes, he just started doing this on his own. He started doing this on his own. I didn't train him. He's not trained. But he knows the sound of the shofar because it's an animal. It's a ram's horn. He knows this. And uh, he, they know more than we could even concept than we could ever understand. And so um, so I hope you enjoyed that resounding sound uh, from my wonderful little dog. Okay. He is a blessing to me. And so anyhow, uh, once again, we're going to uh, recite this uh, Sabbath morning service. And probably when you're listening to it, it's Sabbath day. Uh, this is being recorded in the morning. So... Um, I just, I am full of joy right now on this Sabbath morning and, oh, it's just such a blessing when we get to the last day of the, of the week, uh, and, uh, we just get to rest in him and, uh, to, um, worship him in spirit and in truth, along with so many others around the world. It is a day that we just cut everything out. I'm talking about, even if you can, devices, TV, all this stuff, just cut it out. And uh, as believers, we, we gather together with our families. We read our Bibles. We read the Torah portions. Today, we're going to be going over the Sabbath. And this is for you. This service is actually going to be um, a mixture. Well, not a mixture, but yes, we're going to be going through the portion today. Uh, we're going to be talking about becoming a, a priest of your own home, number one of your own home. And if you're in these, and this service is actually going to be. Uh, narrowed down to um, those who are not used to it, those who are not used to the Sabbath day, or they don't practice it. Um, it's a commanded day. It's the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments. And, um, and so we're going to be, um, I'm going to be talking about some practical things that we can start doing to become a royal priesthood, to become a royal priesthood. And this is what we're called out to be. And I'm going to be going over those scriptures as usual. Um, but we're called out to be a royal priesthood. And so what are some basic things that a royal priest would look like today? Would look like today? What is it? You know, what does it consist of? Um, some people say, oh, you're going overboard. You're going overboard. No, I'm not going overboard. I'm just being obedient. And yes, we are to be a royal priesthood. And what does it consist of? So we're going to be going over those scriptures on what it consists of. And so a couple practical things we can start uh, for those who are not used to it. Those who maybe are going to Sunday services, okay, which is, which is, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. You know, as long as you're keeping the commandment of keeping the Sabbath day holy. Now, that is commanded for us to do, you know, so we want to listen to the voice of Elohim, the voice of God, and we want to be obedient children. So we must keep that, that fourth commandment, that Sabbath commandment, the fourth commandment out of the ten. And so today I'll be, I'll be speaking a little about the, the practical things we could do on the Sabbath and what, the, what, is it, what does it entail that we should be doing on the Sabbath. And so it is a wonderful thing. So um, let me catch my breath here. Anyhow, um, we first and foremost, you know, we got to understand that this Sabbath day is, is not only celebrated or, or, or being um, celebrated by us. Okay, it's, it's in the heavens too. It's his heavenly host because he created all things in six days and that includes his heavenly host. I'm talking about the, the angels, the messengers, the heavenly host. Because where does his sanctuary, where is his sanctuary? Well, it's in the heavens. It's a kingdom in heaven, okay? So he sits on his royal throne. And so when he sits on his royal throne, do you believe that they don't have to be obedient <laughs> to his commandments? No, they have to be obedient also. Uh, and so anyhow, it is a beautiful thing. So just picture in your mind's eye that right now, 
as you're listening to this service, maybe you've already attended a service today, uh, understand that this is going on in heaven too, uh, with the messengers, with the heavenly host. And all those that have gone on before us, they died in believing in Yeshua, having faith in Jesus Christ. They have gone on to be in that good place. Well, they got to follow the commandments too, because it's the Lord's commandments. And he gave them for us for a reason. And so we must understand that here on earth as it is in heaven. And so when we get that, then it makes it more intimate. And it's the truth. It is the truth. You know, I spoke about the Merkava. I spoke about the heavenly throne, the chariot throne of the Lord, how uh, Ezekiel speaks about him in uh, the first chapter of, of Ezekiel and uh, these scriptures that I'm going to read right now. And so this is for those that are not used to the Sabbath. And if you know somebody that maybe the only ones that listen to this would be somebody who's practicing the Sabbath, like my brothers and sisters, they probably will listen to this Sabbath service. Maybe many will not, okay? And they'll just shut it off thinking we don't have to do the Sabbath no more or thinking that they go to church on Sunday, so no use of doing the Sabbath on the appointed day of the Lord. So this is for those, maybe you know somebody, maybe you, you let them hear this service, okay? Because this is going to be uh, some, to those who are not used to it, to those who are not practicing it. Some practical things, practical things that you can do to start, start uh, somewhere. You got to start somewhere to be obedient to the Lord's commandments, and they're not burdensome. They're not heavy, okay? And so um, we're going to go ahead and pray into this service th this morning and um, uh, this afternoon, and we're just going to, you know, take it from there, and I'm going to go over these scriptures with you, and um, I hope you glean a little bit of something. So I'm going to mention two practical things which you can start today or as soon as possible if you're not following the commandments of the Lord and if you think they've been abolished. And let me just tell you this, that Jesus Christ, Yeshua, he followed the commandments, all of them, all of them, and he showed us that they're not a burden. He showed us that they're not abolished. He showed us that they're wonderful for us. And he showed us how to live them in joy, in happiness. He, he showed us. He showed us how to be obedient. And then he tells us. He says, you know what? You are to be a royal priesthood. You are to be obedient. Like I was obedient to the Father when I walked on the earth. I showed you how to be obedient. And so if you think, well, no, he brought something new. No, he didn't. He, he displayed his life in obedience. And all the disciples were following him. And they were doing what he does. Okay, and so it is beautiful. It is wonderful. It's not bondage. Okay, it's not bondage. So, all right. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and begin this Sabbath service this morning. Um, and so once again, I, 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 I hope you enjoyed that shofar blast, the resounding sound. And uh, let's go ahead and commence here. And so this is Sabbath uh, 25, okay? This is Sabbath 25. This is the 25th Sabbath. Um, uh, the 25th Sabbath service of the year. Remember, there's 52 Sabbaths per year, no more, no less. Uh, that is one complete year. On his calendar, his creation calendar until now, okay, we got June 21st. Okay, June 21st, 5949, concerning from the creation of the world until now. Okay, and so uh, we're going to be reading from this week's priestly division is Eliashib. Eliashib. And, it, and Eliashib is from the 11th division. Uh, it, today is September the 7th on your Gregorian calendar, 2024. Okay, and so there we go. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 3, it says, And another messenger came and stepped next to the temple, and golden fire pans were in his hand, and much incense was given to him, to give it as the prayer of the set-apart ones before the temple and before the throne. Exodus chapter 30, verse 7, And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning when he dresses the lamps. He shall burn incense upon it. And so once again, I have lit the incense. It is very beautiful because our incense 
is a sacrifice. It is something that we do so that our prayers reach up. They're, they have a lot to do with prayers that go up. And so it is very beautiful to do this. Wonderful. And remember, Aaron was the acting high priest at the moment. Now we have a high priest in the heavens, which is Jesus Christ, Yeshua. And so he loves the sweet smelling aroma of our obedience. And this is what it stands for. Okay. And so uh, one of the many things it stands for. So it's a sweet smelling aroma, our obedience. And so in Genesis chapter two, one through three, it says the heavens and the earth and all their vast array were finished on the seventh day. Elohim finished his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then Elohim blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it and he made it holy because he rested in it from all his work of creation, which he had done. Exodus chapter 31, verses 16 and 17. Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations, for a perpetual covenant forever. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. When he finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the covenant, stone tablets written with the finger of Elohim. Kadesh et Hayom, which means in the Hebrew, holiness of the Sabbath day. And so we're going to go ahead and pray into this Sabbath day in the name of uh, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're going to go ahead and pray into this Sabbath day of rest. So if you would please uh, uh, pray with me and bow your heads. If you want to bow your heads, you know, I'm just saying, just pray with me. Our Elohim and the Elohim of our fathers, El of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may you be pleased with our rest today. May you sanctify us in your commandments. May you satisfy us from your goodness and make us rejoice in your salvation. And may you purify our hearts to serve you in truth, in love, and favor. O Yahweh Yeshua, for you are one. May you grant us your holy Sabbath as an inheritance, and may Israel, who sanctifies your name, rest therein. Amen and amen. All right, so then now we begin this portion of, of this service. As always, I continue. I will continue to recite these scriptures because there has been a great uh, disconnection from the royal priesthood. And so we are called to be a royal priesthood. And so we're going to commence with these with these scriptures here. We are called to be a set apart royal priesthood, a holy nation here on earth as it is in heaven. We're going to be speaking about this today as it is in heaven. Numbers chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. Priests and Levites. Now these are the generations of Aaron and Moses at the time when Yahweh spoke with Moses on Mount Sinai. These then are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed priests, whom he ordained to minister as priests. But Nadab and Abihu died before Yahweh when they offered strange fire before Yahweh in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. So Eleazar and Ithamar ministered as priests in the lifetime of their father Aaron. Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near and have them stand before Aaron the priest, that they may minister to him, and they shall keep his responsibility and the responsibility for the whole congregation before the tent of meeting to perform the service of the tabernacle. They shall also keep all the furnishings of the tent of meeting, along with the responsibility of the sons of Israel, to perform the service of the tabernacle. You shall thus give the Levites to Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given to him from among the sons of Israel. So you shall appoint Aaron and his sons, that they may keep their priesthood. But the outsider who comes near shall be put to death. 
First Chronicles chapter 24, 1 through 5, and uh, verse 9. Now, uh, I'm sorry, that would be verse, uh, just uh, First Chronicles 1 through 5. Now the divisions of the sons of Aaron were these. The sons of Aaron were Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father had no sons, and had no sons. So Eleazar and Ithamar ministered as priests. And David with Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and the Ahimelech, and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, divided them according to their assignments for their service. And more chief men were found from the sons of Eleazar than the sons of Ithamar. So they divided them thus. There were sixteen heads of fathers' households of the sons of Eleazar, and eight of the sons of, Eli uh, of Ithamar, according to their fathers' according to their fathers' households. They were divided by lot. Excuse me for a moment. They were divided by lot, the one as the other, for they were leaders for the sanctuary and leaders for Elohim both from the sons of Eleazar and the sons of Ithamar. Shemaiah, the son of Nathanael, the scribe from the Levites, wrote them down in the presence of the king. The princes, Zadok the, pro the priest, Ahimelech the son of, the son of Abiathar, and the heads of the father's households of the priests and of the Levites. One father's household taken for Eleazar and one taken for Ithamar. And so we read this week's division, this priestly division for this Sabbath day, would be Eliashib from the eleventh, from the eleventh division, Eliashib. Uh, just excuse me, just a minute here. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so from the 11th is Eliashib. Okay, I just had to make some corrections here. A little bit of update here. So the 11th is the priestly division of this Sabbath is Eliashib. And so in Luke chapter 1, 5 and 6, it says, In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the eighth division of the priestly division of Abiyah. And he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous in the sight of Elohim, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and righteous requirements of the Lord. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. But you, my beloved, this is you out there, you, my beloved, but you are a chosen family, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for Yah Elohim's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so this is where we have the divine connection from Zechariah to John, to John, to the apostles. And you say, well, where is the temple? Our bodies are the living temple. And Yeshua, our Lord, our Savior, resides inside of us. And so he is our priest. He is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So he calls us to be a royal priesthood under him. And so there is the divine connection. So in Revelation chapter 20, we're going to be going over these scriptures again today. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed is he who has part in the first resurrection, for over them there is no power of the last death. So he kept this holy priesthood going. It was severed, and he continued to keep it going. But they will be priests to Yahweh and his Mashiach, and they will rule with him for a thousand years. So once again, Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. 
Blessed is he who has a part in the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. For over them there is no power of the second death. But they will be priests to Yahweh and his Mashiach. And they will rule with him for a thousand years. Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 15. What are the responsibilities in the millennial kingdom as royal priests? The Levitical responsibilities. But the Levitical priests, the sons of Zadok, who kept the responsibility of my sanctuary when the sons of Israel went astray from me, shall come near to me to minister to me, and they shall stand before me to bring near to me the fat and the blood, declares Lord Yahweh. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 9 and 11, 9 through 11. And Yahweh then spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, neither you nor your sons with you, when you come into the tent of meeting, so that you will not die. It is a perpetual statute forever throughout your generations. And so as to separate between the holy and the profane, between the unclean and the clean. We're going to be speaking about the clean and unclean animal today. And so as to instruct the sons of Israel in all the statutes which Yahweh has spoken to them through Moses. So you might be saying, that was the Levitical priesthood. Yes, indeed it was. This is why we're studying the commandments of the Lord. Because in Ezekiel chapter 44... This is the Millennial Kingdom. Ezekiel chapter 44, 21, 23 through 24. Nor shall any of the priests drink wine when they enter the inner court. Moreover, they shall instruct my people about the difference between the holy and the profane, and make them know the difference between the unclean and the clean. And in a dispute, they shall take their stand to judge. They shall judge it according to my judgments. They shall also keep my laws and my statutes in all my appointed times, his feast days, and keep my Sabbaths holy. And so this is what we're going to be doing, almost verbatim. Actually, it is verbatim of what he told Aaron in the Levitical priesthood and Zadok, the holy priest. The same things he's calling us to be a royal priesthood. This is the Millennial Kingdom chapters. So that's the details of what will be going on in his millennial kingdom. And who is our high priest? Once again, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen and amen. And so in Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 16, Therefore, says, thus says Lord Yahweh, Although I have cast them far off from the, among the Gentiles, scattered everywhere, remember our homes, our, is the sanctuary. Our homes, our bodies are the temples. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter if he wants you to be a priest of your own home. This is number one. We're going to be speaking about this today. And then we can be a priest among our neighborhoods. And so it doesn't matter wherever you are scattered, wherever you are in this entire world. Remember, we have been grafted in. We're one new man. There's only one body, and it's worldwide, but it's one body. It's supposed to be one body under Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is Yahweh Elohim. Therefore it say, thus says Lord Yahweh, although I have cast them far off among the Gentiles, and although I have scattered them among the countries, but the Lord says, yet I shall be a little sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Amen and amen. And so you say, well, we don't sacrifice animals no more. No, we do not. But if you read in Ezekiel, there will be sacrifices to the Lord. And he will be doing the sacrifices. And he will commence in the millennial kingdom. For who? The surviving nations. We're going to be reading about this today also. In Hosea chapter 14, verse 2, until then... We offer sacrifices of obedience, sacrifices from our lips, sacrifices of obedience. In Hosea chapter 14, verse 2, it says, Take words with you and return to Yahweh. Say to him, Take away all iniquity. Receive us graciously, Abba, Father, for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips. Amen and amen. So in other words, they didn't have the temple. 
So until then, they were able to offer up sacrifices of obedience with their lips. Amen and amen. And so we go ahead to the next portion, the next section, uh, section of this service this morning. We're going to go ahead and pray into this. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Scriptures that I was indicating earlier that we are doing right now on this earth, as this service is taking place right now on this Sabbath, we are worshiping along with the heavenly host here on earth as it is in heaven. Yahweh Yeshua, we will sanctify your name in this world, even as it is sanctified in the heavens above, as it is written by your holy prophet Isaiah and by Yohanan. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 2 and 4, 2 through 4. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw Yahweh sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling out to one another, Kadosh, 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 holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of hosts. All the earth is full of his glory. Amen, Abba. Amen. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, Yahweh of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from off the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. I heard the Lord's voice saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Hineni, Abba, Father, Hineni, here I am, send me. Amen, and amen, and amen. In Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 8, we rever reverberate this through John, Yohanan, the revelator, Yeshua, to John. And after this, I saw that a door was opened in the heavens, Yochanan saw it himself and remind you that Yochanan was a holy priest. Yes, he was. And after this, I saw that a door was opened in the heavens, and the first voice which I heard that spoke with me like the voice of a shofar said to me, Come here, and I want to show you what will happen after this. And forthwith and immediately the Ruach HaKodesh rested on me, and I saw a throne sitting in the heavens, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat on it, his appearance was like the appearance of the stone sapphire and, a, and jasper. And around the throne was a bow like turquoise. And around the throne were twenty-four thrones, and twenty-four elders sat on them, clothed with white garments of linen. And on their heads was a crown of gold. And from the throne there went out voices and thunders and lightnings. And there were seven lamps before the throne, and they are the seven ruchot, the seven spirits of Yahweh. And before the throne was a sea of glass, like the appearance of crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes at their front and at their back. And the first living creature was like the appearance of a lion, and the second like an ox, and the third like a man, and the fourth like an eagle. And each one had six wings. Also from the inside they were filled with eyes. And they do not have rest day or night, but they say continually, Kadosh, 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 is Yahweh Tezvaot, the mighty, who was and is and will be. Amen, and amen, and amen. So we're going to be talking about fine linen today, garments of linen. We're going to be talking about Aaron, the priesthood. And so now we get to this portion of this service, the Sabbath Psalm. 
the Sabbath Psalm of the Week. This is Psalm 25. This is Sabbath 25. This is the reading 25. This is the 25th Sabbath of the year. Next week is going to be very important, very special Sabbath. It is the 26th Sabbath. It is the, the break. It is the middle. It is the half of the year. Next week, 26 times 2 is 50, 52 Sabbaths. And so next week is going to be very, very special Sabbath. Half of the year that the Lord has blessed us with. So this is the Sabbath Psalm, Psalm 25. Lead me in your truth, a Psalm of David. We we'll start with the, the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. This is how this Psalm truly goes. Aleph, to you, O Yahweh, I lift up my soul. Bait, O my Elohim, in you I trust. Do not let me be ashamed. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Gimel, indeed, let none who hope in you be ashamed. Let those who deal treacherously without cause be ashamed. Dalit, make me know your ways, O Yahweh. Teach me your paths. He and Wow, lead me in your truth and teach me. Yod hey, wow hey, hey and wow. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the Elohim of my salvation. In you I hope all the day. Zion, Zion. Remember, O Yahweh, your compassion and your loving kindness, for they have been from of old. Het. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions according to your loving kindness. Remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Yahweh. Tet. Good and upright is Yahweh. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. Yod. May he lead the humble in justice and may he teach the humble his way. Kaf. All the paths of Yahweh are loving kindness and truth to those who guard his covenant and his testimonies. Lamed, for your name's sake, O Yahweh, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Mem, who is the man who fears Yahweh? He will instruct him in the way he should choose. Nun, his soul will abide in goodness, and his seed will inherit the land. Samech, the secret of Yahweh is for those who fear him, and he will make them know his covenant. Amen. Ayin, my eyes are continually toward Yahweh, for he will bring my feet out of the net. Pay, turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am alone and afflicted. Sadi, the troubles of my heart are enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Resh, see my affliction and my trouble, O Yahweh, and forgive all my sins. Resh, see my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with violent hatred. Sheen, keep my soul and deliver me, O Yahweh. Do not let me be ashamed, for I take refuge in you, Abba Father. Tav, or Wow. Wow. Uh, let integrity and uprightness guard me, Ta. Let in integrity and uprightness guard me, Abba Father. For I hope in you, redeem Israel, O Elohim, out of all his troubles. And so I pray this over Israel also. Redeem Israel, O Elohim, out of all his troubles. Amen and amen and amen and amen. And so now we're going to go ahead and commence with this Torah reading, this Torah portion reading of this week. Uh, Torah portion reading is 25. Once again, it is Sawa, Sawa, and that means command, command from the priestly division 11, Eliashib. And so from the Torah, we have Leviticus chapter 6, verse 8, through chapter 8, verse 36. From the prophet Jeremiah, 
Yid me Yahu, Yid me Yahu. We have chapter 7, verses 21 through 8, chapter 8, verse 3, chapter 9, 23, and 24. And from the renewed covenant, we got John, Yohanan. We got the entire chapter 14. And so let's go ahead and commence with this Torah portion. And we'll go ahead and continue now. Blessed be your word, Abba Father. And so I want to pray in before we start here once again. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, El of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, El of Israel and Judah, may you open up the eyes and the ears of those who listen to this service. May your wisdom go forth. May your truth of your word go forth. And may we edify you. May we exalt your holy name, Abba Father, in this Sabbath day of rest. And I pray all this in your mighty and precious name. Adonai Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua Mashiach, Ruach HaKodesh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all in one, for you are one. You are King of the universe and creator of all things. You are our high priest, Yeshua HaMashiach, in the order of Melchizedek. Blessed be you, Abba Father. Amen and amen and amen. And so I pray, Adonai Sifatai Tiftach Ufi Yagid Tehilatecha. Adonai, may you open up my lips so that my mouth may declare your praise. Yehiyu leratzon, which means may they be acceptable. Yehiyu leratzon imrefi vihigyon divi lefanecha Adonai tisuri vigoili, which means may the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable before you, O Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua my rock and my redeemer. Amen. And so we go ahead and bless this Torah portion, and then we'll go ahead and commence in the reading. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and has given us his Torah. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Notain HaTorah, blessed are you, O Yahweh Yeshua, Yah Yeshua, for you are one, giver of the Torah. Amen, and amen, and amen. And so I go ahead and commence and read the first portion here. And then uh, the message for today. And so this is once again... Uh, this is Leviticus chapter 6, verse 8. And we're going to read down to verse 18. Let me go ahead and get a drink of water here. It says, Then Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron, this is Sawa, Sawa, it means command, Sawa. Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law for the burnt offering. The burnt offering itself shall remain on the hearth of the altar all night until the morning, and the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. So we got to understand once again before I continue here, as we were going over the offerings last week, and as we did the comparison of the book of Ezekiel, chapter 40 through 48, if you did your homework and you read through it, you see almost identical of all these commands and these instructions that were given to the Levitical priests. And we know the Levitical priests and the sons of Zadok are going to be a priesthood, and we are going to be priests also. This is what the Lord came to do, to call upon us to be a royal priesthood in the millennial kingdom, alongside the Levitical priests, together as one, one new man. We're going to be going over those scriptures today. And so these burnt offerings are going to be going on in the millennial kingdom. For who? Zechariah chapter 14 tells us there will be survivors, and they're going to need to be taught. They're going to need to be judged and counseled. They need to be helped in the, in the situations of a dispute. We went over those scriptures. 
in situations of a dispute, just like Moses did, just like Aaron did. They took care of the community. And they, in case of disputes, we're going to have to settle the disputes according to God's law. And so this is going to be our detail, our positions in the kingdom. And we should start now learning these things. Until then, we can be obedient to his commandments in the ways that we can be obedient to. We're going to be going over those. They're very simple, very simple, simple commandments to live by. The same commandments that Yeshua was living by, they're very simple. They're very simple. And they're an honor. And so we go ahead. In verse 10, it says, And the priest shall put on his linen robe. We're going to be speaking about the linen robes. This is his dress. This, this dress, this what he was wearing, what they were commanded to wear. And the priest shall put on his linen robe, and he shall put on undergarments next to his flesh, and he shall raise up the ashes to which the fire reduces the burnt offering on the altar and place them beside the altar. Then he shall take off his garments, and on other garments carry the ashes outside the camp to a clean place. And on the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not go out, for the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and he shall lay out the burnt offering on it, and offer up in smoke the fat portions of the peace offerings on it. Fire shall be kept burning continually on the altar. It shall not go out. Now this is the law of the grain offering. The sons of Aaron shall bring it near before Yahweh in front of the altar. Then one of them shall raise up from it a handful of the fine flour of the grain offering, with its oil and all the frankincense that is on the grain offering, and he shall offer it up in smoke on the altar, a soothing aroma, as its memorial offering to Yahweh, Yeshua. What is left of it, Aaron and his sons? So we got to understand that Yahweh Yeshua, our high priest, Yeshua HaMashiach, will be standing in his temple on this earth. And so right before him, he's going to be standing right there with us. And we're going to be offering up these offerings to him. It says, what is left of it, Aaron and his son shall eat. It shall be eaten as unleavened cakes in a holy place. They shall eat it in the court of the tent of meeting. It shall not be baked with leaven. I, I have given it as their share from my offerings by fire. It is most holy like the sin offering and the guilt offering. Every male among the sons of Aaron may eat it. It is a perpetual statue forever. Throughout your generations, that means into the millennial kingdom. This is why it says forever. This is why it says this. Forever is the millennial kingdom. Forever is forever. From the offerings by fire to Yahweh, whoever touches them will be set apart as holy. So my beloved, please, I just, I implore you to make these connections. And this is why it says a perpetual statute. It is forever statute. I used to have problems with this. I said, why would it say this in Leviticus? Way back there, the Levitical priesthood that has been abolished, that has been done away with. This is what I was taught in churches. That's gone. No more priesthood. That's it. The Lord became our high priest. That's it. I was taught this in churches. I was misled. Because when I started studying Leviticus, I would come over this and I would say, why does it say forever? Why does it say a perpetual statue? Why does it say this here? And I go, forever means forever. So I thought it's been abolished. I thought it's gone. I thought we just go to heaven. That's it. I didn't nearly know what we're going to do in heaven, maybe fly around and maybe uh, play harps and, and, and fly with little wings, and, and that's it. 
sit on clouds all day? I don't know. But no, there's duties that we're going to be doing. It's going to be a real world. Advanced though, right? Upgraded by Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, amen? And we're going to have details, jobs to do as priests. We're going to be helping the survivors, amen? And so then I came to this conclusion. I said, oh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 44, Ezekiel 40 through 48. Oh, I see now. And then I, I read 1 Peter. And then I read the book of John, and I'm going to be reading these scriptures to you. I said, oh, that's what it is to become a holy royal priest in the, in the order of Melchizedek, in the order of Aaron. This is why it speaks of this in Leviticus as being perpetual. I said, oh, I get it now. So I want you to get this. Grab a hold of it. If you're not used to it, Read it. It is what it is. It says what it says. And accept it. Because this is the way it's going to be. Amen? And it is a blessing. It is a true blessing. And so, what the Lord has put on my heart, and He's been putting more on my heart as I am learning this, and I have brought, got given this awakening, is now I'm going to pass it on to those that are not used to this. Maybe that were taught the same things I was taught. That this priesthood is gone. No, it got severed along the way. Yes, it did. By a whole new system in Israel. And so he came and says, no. No, not that way. And that kingdom, that, that I'm sorry, that temple came down. That priesthood came down. It was corrupt. And it came down and he mended it. The royal lineage. Zechariah, Elizabeth, the royal lineage from Aaron. The priesthood. This kind of service right now. This kind of service. And so he mended. He said, no, this is the way it is. This is the way it's always been. And this is the way it's going to be. And my Torah, my instructions are not a burden. And he lived them out. We've got to understand he's our high priest. And he lived out the duties of a high priest. He lived, he conducted his life on earth the way we should be living it. And then he gave us instructions because he says what? This is how it's going to be in his kingdom on earth. Get used to it. Teach others. Share this with others. Raise up more holy priests. And we're going to be looking at practical things on what it is to become a priest now. People might be laughing at you. What are you saying? You're going deep, David. You're going too deep. It's practical. It's practical. And it's scripture. It's practical and it's scripture. What does today's priest look like? Well, just like me, just like anybody, a believer. But we have duties to do. We have studying to do for the millennial kingdom. Get used to it because that's the way it's going to be. That is scripture. And so let's go ahead and commence now. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start reading you some scriptures. And I'm going to base it upon number one, Leviticus chapter six, verse 10. It says, and the priest shall put on linen robes, linen garments. And he shall put on undergarments next to his flesh. And he shall raise up the ashes to which the fire reduces the burnt offering on the altar and place them beside the altar. Now, remember, he gave us these instructions of the heavenly temple of the services that go on in the heavens with the Lord up there as king as high priest right now in his temple. And I'm going to show you a scripture where it says the messenger wore linen garments. The messenger, the angels, wore linen garments or wearing linen garments in that place in the heavens. Yes, I'll be showing you these scriptures. And so it is a copy, a foreshadow that he gave us on this earth 
of the tent of meeting and all the showbread and all the furnishings that we're going through, the offerings we're going through. This was a blueprint, a shadow of the things to come in the heavenly courts here on earth as it is in heaven. This is why they were given to us. For we are made in his image and one day we're going to be brought back together. His kingdom on earth when heaven meets earth. And so now I'll take you to these scriptures. So we're focusing in right now on the linen robes that were instructed, commanded by Yahweh to Moses, to Aaron, to wear. Priestly garments. Priestly garments. Do you ever wonder why it was specific? Do you ever wonder why the Lord would say, well, this is detailed. I need it to be like this. The ephod and everything that entails, the turbans, the type of material. Did you ever wonder why it was so detailed? Because he was giving us a foreshadow of what goes on in the heavens right now in the heavenly courts, in his sanctuary. So this is what's been disconnected in our services in churches. Remember what I was taught. And this might seem strange to you, but I implore you to go through these scriptures, and it is truth. It is truth. And so we continue now. And so I'm going to take you to Revelation chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 6. So if you have your Bibles there, maybe open it up. Maybe go along with me. Try to keep up with me here. So I'll give you a minute here. Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. All right, so we're going to go ahead and commence. Revelation chapter 1, verse 6. It says here, And he made us to be a kingdom. You say, well, the kingdom is here on this earth. We are the kingdom. Right now is the kingdom. It's spiritual. That's error. That's, that's an erroneous teaching. Yes, for right now we're on this earth, but he's talking about what? When his kingdom comes down to earth and how to conduct ourselves until then. And so it says, and he made us, us, believers in Jesus Christ, believers in Yeshua, all around the world is supposed to be one body. There's no different messiahs. There's no different Jesus Christ all over the place and different bodies. He calls us to be one body. So this speaks of every single believer in Jesus Christ, of what I'm speaking about, of the holy priesthood. This is truth. It says, and he made us to be a kingdom, priests to his Elohim and Father. Who did? Yeshua. To him be the glory and the might forever and ever. Amen. And so, Revelation chapter 5, just a few pages over. Chapter 5, verse 10. And you made them to be a kingdom and priest to our Elohim. And they will reign upon the earth. This is not spiritual. This is not spiritual. This is the kingdom to come. And all those who have went on before us, oh, you better believe they'll be there because he's going to call them first. First. And then, in a twinkling of an eye, those who remain on the earth, he will catch up to him. And that is at the last final seven years. It says, and you made them to be a kingdom at the final of the last seven years. Please do not take me out of context. And you made them to be a kingdom and priests to our Elohim, and they will reign upon the earth. Revelation chapter 15, verse 6. And the seven angels, the seven messengers, who have the seven plagues, came out of the 
sanctuary in the heavens. So there is a sanctuary in the heavens right now as we speak. A temple. And they were clothed in linen. In linen. The dress that was told to Aaron. I need you to dress like this, Aaron, and your sons, Aaron. We just read it in today's Torah portion in Leviticus chapter 6. The linen that is commanded. It says clean and bright and girded around their chest with golden sashes. There's a dress code for the messengers in heaven. And it's linen. This is real. This is truth. So now you think, why? How did he give Aaron these details? Why do you think? Because there were copies of what goes on in the sanctuary in heaven by the messengers. The heavenly host. Once again, I'm going to read this because it's very powerful. And the seven angels, the seven messengers who have the seven plagues came out of the sanctuary. Clothed in linen. Clean and bright. And girded around their chest with golden sashes. Yes, we have ministering angels. Amen. And this is a foreshadow copies of the things that will come in the millennial kingdom. So now I want you to go over. We're sticking in the book of Revelation. You don't got to go far. The book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 8. And it was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen. Bright and clean for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. So there's meaning behind these white clothing, this white linen. It stands for righteousness. It stands for obedience. It stands for the righteous acts of the saints. One package deal. The fruits of the Spirit, everything that the Lord entails, Him being our high priest, those acts, what we live out here on this earth, we're talking about prayer, we're talking about helping the needy, we're talking about doing all these wonderful things, but most importantly, following the commandments, being obedient, the Lord's righteous ways in the heavens, the instructions he gave us, meanwhile, on this earth to live out until his millennial kingdom comes. So that's one of the reasons we have the fine linen Bright and clean. And so we jump over to, to uh, Revelation chapter 19, verse 14. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. Myriads of the holy ones. And he is the Lord of heaven's armies. Who is heaven's armies? Uh, the angels, the messengers, us, the heavenly hosts, those who have gone on, believers. Us right now on earth. Conducting ourselves in a righteous way. He is Lord. We, he is Lord of heaven's armies which will include us. And so we don't go back, back, just back some pages in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. I'll give you a minute to get there because this is very important. Remember, this is Yeshua speaking. Who is Yeshua? He is Yahweh Elohim, for him and the Father are one. Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. 
So the dragon, Hasatan, the adversary, he was enraged with the woman, Israel, and went off to make war with the rest of her seed, together as one, who keep the commandments of Elohim and have the witness of Jesus, Yeshua. Once again, because so many will take this out of context and say, yeah, the dragon's going to go after the ones that keep the Torah and, and, and because they're Israel and it's just for Israel and he's going to go after them, but not believers in Jesus Christ because we're going to be raptured before then. We're not going to be there. That's not what the scripture says. That is not what the scripture says. I'm going to read it again. The woman being Israel. So the dragon, Satan, was enraged with the woman Israel and went off to make war with the rest of her seed who keep the commandments of Elohim and have the witness of Jesus, of Yeshua. These are believers in that day that are keeping holy the commandments of the Lord, believers in Yeshua, because this is what he calls us to do, is to be obedient to his commandments. So much has went on and so much happened that the majority of all churches say no more commandments. No more. That is not true. And that's scripture right here. That's scripture. That's not my words. It's not my words. It's his words. And once again, let us go back to. I paint you a pretty picture. Pretty picture. A picture of peace. Of love. Of joy. So many say it's a bondage. Why would, you, why would you follow the laws? They're a bondage. I'm right here. I, I don't, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not in bondage. I'm rejoicing, and so many other brothers and sisters are rejoicing on this day, and the heavens rejoice also on this day. That's not bondage to me. Because I know the Lord is the Sabbath. He created all things, and that's what this day is about. I rejoice. A day of rest in him. Amen. And so it says, who keep the commandments of God and have the witness of Jesus, believers in Yeshua, in that day. What day? This is concerning the end. This is concerning. So there is no rapture before the great tribulation. There is no rapture. If you read the context of this scripture in Revelation 12, he's speaking about that time of Jacob's distress, Jacob's trouble, which comes at the three and a half mark of the last seven years. And then at the end of the seven years, there's only one coming of our Lord to rescue us, to save us. And that's the end of the seven years. Immediately after the seven years, immediately after the great tribulation, immediately after the tribulation. And so we'll get back. Now, I wanted you to go over to a couple chapters after that. So now we're talking about the commandments because we're going to be speaking about the commandments today and the practical ways you can start if you haven't started so already. And if you out there listening that are used to the Sabbath, that are rejoicing, that are listening to this message, and you maybe you got friends, you know, that go to churches and you got friends that don't do this, then maybe you could let them listen to this message. Because this is all scripture. And it's wonderful. It's beautiful. 
And I'm going to give you some practical ways that you don't have to stop going to Sunday service. You don't have to stop. This is not what I'm saying. Just, just so you'll know, you don't have to stop. But you must keep the Sabbath day holy. Because once it, it once again is the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the perseverance of the saints. And no, we're not talking about saints as far as statues. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, you are considered a saint. A saint is someone that believes in Jesus Christ that has given their life a born again believer. Automatically, you're, you're considered a saint. There has been many erroneous teachings that a saint is a statue that you put on the wall or a picture you hang on the wall. And then most of the time you try to look for that saint in the Bible and you can't find that person. Because it was just a believer, a righteous man, a woman. He calls all of us to be righteous. They were just human beings, just like me and you. Loving the Lord with all their hearts were considered to be saints unto the Lord. And never to be worshipped. Never to be worshipped or taken the glory from the Lord Most High. It's Him and Him only that deserves all the glory. For He is the creator of all things. You wouldn't want nobody worshiping you as a saint, would you? Of course not. Even the angels would say in Scripture, Get up! Get up! Don't fall on your face before me. I'm just a messenger. I'm just like you. We're just a little made a little lower than, than the messengers. That's all. But we got angels, messengers themselves that say this in Scripture. I'm paraphrasing, but it is there. When Gabriel visited, I don't know who, he says, get up. They fell on their face to worship him. He says, I'm not, uh-uh, get up. Don't do that to me. An angel that's, that's before the presence of Elohim. So you think someone's going to worship you as a saint? No. We shouldn't be doing nothing like that. We have a jealous God. He receives all the glory. And so let me continue with the commandments here. It says here in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, it says, here's the perseverance of the saints, believers in Jesus Christ, Yeshua, who keep the commandments of Elohim and their faith in Jesus, in Yeshua. Once again, another scripture that testifies to the believers keeping the commandments of Elohim. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of Elohim and their faith in Yeshua. They go together. Faith and obedience. It's scripture. And so now we continue. The Sabbath days. So we're going to go through a couple scriptures here. Let me see if I got this in order here. Okay, so in Leviticus chapter 23, we have the Sabbath. So this is some practical things. Now I'll go on to say just, and we're going to be going on to the, 
profit portion. I'm not going to make this extensive, but I'm going to show you in the original. For those who are not used to it, this is this is for you. This is for you. We got to start somewhere. We got to start somewhere. And what do I mean by this? I didn't grow up knowing this knowledge. I was also taught erroneous teachings all my life in churches. All my life. But when I came to the knowledge of this truth, what did I do? What should I do? <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> where do I start? And this was all by myself. Nobody told me this. I just started reading and, and, and reading my Bible. I'm like, wow, wait a minute here. When is the Sabbath? Well, it's today. I'm not going to get into an extensive background on this, but all those that know the truth, they know the Gregorian calendar changed the Sabbath. Or no, I'm sorry, changed the order of the week, Monday through Sunday, the last day being Sunday. We know that was changed. That's the Gregorian calendar. We don't, we don't need to be rocket scientists to know this. But it never was like this. before and there's scripture there's multiple scriptures where it tells you when the last day of the week is it always been saturday and even saturday wasn't around back then the names of the week one scripture and on the first day of the week they found jesus the tomb empty and I'm not going to get into more detail than that because it's saying that's the first day of the week. It didn't say the Sabbath. It didn't say to change the day. It didn't say that. It just said that's the first day of the week. That's when they found the tomb empty. And the Sabbath was a day before. The last day of the week. So man has changed the calendar. So we don't go by man's calendar according to God's biblical ways. God did not command them to change the, the weekday. Let's get that first and be practical about it. So, okay, you get to the point of knowing, well, today is the last day of the week. Yes. Tomorrow is the first day of the week. Yes. True. True. And so we get to the Sabbath. So the Sabbath continues forever, forever. We read Ezekiel chapter 44. We read those scriptures. It's a perpetual statute forever. And so we say, okay, so then I'll get back to what did I do? What did I do? Okay. I'm like, wow. Well, first of all, I, I stopped going. I didn't go to church really no more. I mean, I tried to go to church, and this is when all this started happening. I'm like, whoa, okay, so what do I do? So out there, you listening to me, what do I do? It's very practical. What I did personally, as the sun is setting, now we know by Scripture that the dark, the dark and the light, a 24-hour period, also... The universal timing changed it also. They say midnight. They say midnight. But the Lord says twilight to twilight. First there was evening, and then there was day. And then there was the first day. We go back to Genesis. First there was evening, and then day, and we had one day. So that's your 24-hour period. From sundown to the next day at sundown. Sundown to sundown. 24 hours. You have 12 hours of evening, of dark. You got 12 hours of sun. Daylight makes 24 hours. 
So that's not too complicated to know this. And that's the way he, the Lord made it. He made it like this. Okay, so that's your 24-hour day. And so don't get confused when you say day. Okay, yeah, right now the day, the sun's out. But one complete day, because the Lord made it like that. He said, there, there's one day. Evening, all the way to evening, one day, sunset to sunset. 24 hours. Okay, so this is the Lord's timing. So practical thing, what did I do? All I did was this. It is so simple. Where I'm standing right now, I came up. I said, Lord, I said, I don't know. Um, I prayed. Lord, it says this right here, that this is your Sabbath. It starts right now. And I'm praying to you, and I want to thank you for your Sabbath. I want to thank you for being the creator, creating all things. I don't, I, to this day, I can't remember my exact prayer, but it wasn't long. It wasn't long and long and nothing like this, extravagant. It's just I humbled myself between me and him and my little dog here. And this is what I did on a Friday evening as the sun set. That's it. In the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, I said, Amen. Amen. And then I began to learn of what it entails, the Sabbath. And so what do you usually do on the Sabbath? You don't, well, he doesn't want you going anywhere. He wants you to set that day apart. It's practical. Does it take a little adjusting? Yes, it does. But he will, he will guide your heart if you make that decision to do one practical thing at a time. And we're going to be talking about two. The Sabbath and a dietary law. Yes, that's right. A dietary law. Two practical things you can do to be obedient. To start your journey in obedience. And so I prayed that prayer and I started the Sabbath. I started learning. You can go places. You can go outside. But the only thing, and there is a commandment saying you don't go outside. There is a commandment that says you don't, you shall not go outside. But we know that Yeshua walked outside. So are we changing the commandment? No. Me personally, I stay inside. We're not, we're not of the dark. We're not of the night. So when that Friday at sunset goes down, I just eat my meal and I stay in. And then I wake up in the morning and I do this. What does my personal Sabbath look like? Well, I don't really go out. That's just, that's my personality though. But then I come to find out, well, that's kind of like scripture here. I, I really, but you can go out. You can walk outside. Number one, you should not go and buy things. And make others work for you. Because if you're commanded not to work, number one, do not work on the Sabbath. And we're going to be going over the scriptures now. Then you're not, not going to make somebody work for you. Well, I can't work. I can't work. I got to rest today, but but I'm going to I'm going to make somebody work for me. Oh, I'm going to get some work done at the office. I'm going to start doing some work. No, there's a difference between like a Sunday rest, like a Sunday, the first day of the week. There's a difference. He wants you to shut off everything. He wants you to truly rest in him. And I know it's hard. It is hard for certain individuals to do this. I understand this. I understand this. 
that you might have kids, you might have jobs that entails, you got to work, you got to pay the bills, you got to do this. Okay, I understand that. But if he sees a willing heart, a willing heart to try to change that eventually, uh, well, I'm going to see if I can get this day off. I'm going to ask my boss because I love the Lord that much. I want to do this for him because it's commandment. Remember, you got to love the Lord with all your heart. And so if your boss tells you, you know what? No, uh-uh. you, you don't want you don't want to work on that day. Then I'll find somebody else. OK, you tried. You tried. You made an attempt to do it. And then he sees that. He sees your walk and he says I, he sees that. Well, maybe just maybe the following week, a month later, whatever, you get a job offer from another company or something like this and they want to they said you know what you could take any days of the week you want off oh you want saturday off fine there it is you got that you got this day off because you are willing to take that step to ask your boss to to rearrange your schedule and then he opened up a job that even paid you more and by, and by chance, they said, yeah, you want Saturday? You got Saturday. And then you're able to keep the Sabbath. He'll do things like this. Because you honor his commandments, of course. Of course. And so, but for those who do not work, so you try everything you can to take sunset to sunset off. That's all. Sunset to sunset. And so you go to sleep. You have a Sabbath. You pray into the Sabbath. On Friday at sunset, you pray with your family. And, and this is what you do. You go to sleep. You have dinner. You go to sleep. You wake up. Sabbath morning. You give them thanks. You give them praise. And then if you have a family, you start teaching them. Remember, we are to be a priest of our own homes. So they might not be used to it. So no, this is, you're the man of the house. You're the priest of your home. So no, well, this is how it's going to be. This is what we're going to do. We're going to start praying. We're going to read the Bible for an hour. We're going to listen to a service, a Sabbath service like you're listening to right now. Or you just, you can do it between you and your family. But start. Teach your children. Get them used to it. Your family, what are you doing? I'm having Sabbath. After you finish praying, you finish service, then what do you do? You have your food. You eat your food for the day, your breakfast that you made a day before. You get it ready. You get it prepared a day before, preparation day. So you don't have to do anything. Uh, the wife doesn't have to do anything because everything was prepared on Friday. So now you, all you got to do is maybe wash the dishes or something. So you can relax. You can truly rest. You can go to sleep. Rest. Because six days work is, should be done. Six days work is done and on the seventh day rest. So your kids, you play, you play board games. You keep it, you keep it like just clean, fun. And you don't make others work for you. And just start there. That's practical. That's practical. And so where are the commandments at? Where is this commandment? Well, it's ever, it's in Genesis chapter uh, chapter 1, verse, at the end of verse uh, uh, chapter 1, starting verse 2, uh, chapter 2, I'm sorry, in the book of Genesis. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and everything in it, and he sanctified the seventh. That is the Sabbath. That's why it cannot be changed. And so in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3, it says, The Sabbath. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest. 
complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall not do any work. It is a Sabbath to Yahweh in all your places of habitation. And so what can you uh, clean? Can you get the broom inside your house and, and sweep a little, little things like that? Of course. Can you wash the dishes? Yeah. Many have taken to it extreme. They take it to an extreme and they just sit down. Some have even went, I've heard stories that they go to the extreme of sitting in the dark because they don't want to turn on the light switch because it is considered work. And so there is extreme things that were taught somewhere down the line, which is not true. You don't have to be like that. You can sweep, you can do things. I don't think you're going to be on the outside mowing your lawn and working that hard. He wants you to rest. He wants you to rest. And in our societies today, you're not used to rest. Not like that. The, the body is made and you want to do something. You get antsy. You're like, oh, I want to do something. I want to. He wants you to completely rest in him. And it's first and foremost for him. It's for him. Everything that he has offered us is nothing in comparison of what he's asking us to do. The heaven on earth, the millennial kingdom, a born again spirit, the new heavens, new earth, the deliverance, living in, in eternity with him. That's what he's offering us. And then he just asks us, stop, stop. One day, one day for him. One day. That's all he's asking us. So it should be like a no-brainer. But it takes adjusting to. And you just go about your day. You have your food, you ate. You had your fun with your family. If you got a family, if you have children, maybe you just got your wife. You spend some time with her. You talk about the Bible. You sleep. You let her sleep. You let her rest. Complete rest. You wake up. You talk. Try to put your gadgets away for a day. Try. I know that's very hard, but try Teach your children these things. Number one, on Sabbath morning or Sabbath evening at Friday, teach your children. They might not be too happy about that, but you need to teach them as a child so they'll get used to it and not be disconnected like I was for such a long time. And so that's practical, and that's somewhere you can start. Somewhere you can start. And so if you have any questions, please let me know. Leave a comment or two. Okay. And so this is considered being a royal priest. Because as we read in Ezekiel chapter 44, it talks about keeping the Sabbath holy. This is what we're going to be teaching those survivors in the millennial kingdom as a royal priesthood. About the Sabbath, about the feast days about the commandments. It's scripture. Okay, so now, we read Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. So where do you see it in the New Covenant, in the New Testament? Where is it at? In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. So there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, of Elohim. So there it is there in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9. And if that's not enough for you, well, there's so many scriptures, but I'm not going to go into so many, but I have got a lot of scriptures for you. Now remember, it's because the Lord made everything in six days and he rested on the seventh. And that was not Sunday. That's the first day of the week. 
and he sanctified that day. The holy angels, the messengers, the heavenly hosts are being obedient to his commandment right now. Right now, on in heaven as, as on earth. Here, here on earth as it is in heaven. This is the way it should be. And so we go ahead and continue with the next now. Number two. So that's the Sabbath. Do your best. Do your best. And I mentioned, if you go to church on Sunday, that's fine. You could, every day of the week, you could go to church if you want to. Every day of the week, you have Bible studies all week long. Every day for years, if you want, every day of the year. But there's only one Sabbath day a week. One. This is all he's asking for. Yes, does he want you to stay in the Word all week long? Yes, of course it is. Of course he does. It's not just one day and do whatever you want the rest of the week. No. He wants you every day to be in the Word and every day be worshiping him, just like the seraphim and the cherubim, worship him day and night saying, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. But there's only one set-apart day that he gave us, and he made it holy. And that is his Sabbath day. So now, come Sunday. Okay, so <clears throat> you did your best on Saturday, Friday, to sunset, to sunset, on the day he, he made holy. And so what do you do on Sunday? You go to church. You go to church. As usual. Go worship. But just do not call it the Sabbath day. It's not the Sabbath day. So if you're willing to do both days, then Sunday after church, you could go play, you could go to the lake, you could go buy food, you could go shopping, you could do all this stuff after church on Sunday. How does that sound? But just do not call Sunday the Sabbath day. Because it's not the Sabbath day. Whatever man has done, leave that to man. Because we're going to be judged by God, not man. <laughs> so after you do this on Shabbat, keep the Sabbath holy. Then if you go to church on Sunday, you go to church on Sunday. And then go spend, go do all your shopping, go all, do all your stuff. But set apart his holy day. Amen? Amen and amen. And so next, uh, we'll go to another one that's very simple. I laugh, but it's not a joke. It's not a joke, okay? In Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. Remember, we're going to be teaching in Ezekiel chapter 44, if you read it. We're going to be teaching what is clean and unclean. There's many variety of things that are clean and unclean, according to the commandments, as we've been reading uh, the, the offerings for being clean and unclean. Okay, this, there's going to be survivors there. Okay, so one of those things entails, we're going to be eating. Yes, there's going to be food there. We know the angels eat. They come down, they eat with, with uh, Abraham. Yeshua himself ate after he resurrected. He ate. He was hungry. He made fish. His body, he had a resurrected body, and he ate food. So yes, is there going to be eating in the Millennial Kingdom? Of course. The survivors have to eat. We have to eat. Yeshua ate. There's going to be food. This is why he has the dietary laws. And it is proven that if you eat clean, your health gets better. All these diseases that you got coming, the cancer and all this stuff going on is because there's junk food to the max. And this is not a program for that, but I got very good friends that are experts in the field. And it's proven when you eat all this processed food, you begin, your body begins to decay and so I'm not going to get into depth with this 
But if you got questions, I got I got sources to go to to start eating right and start eating the food that God tells us to eat as believers. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7, and we're going to go over one item, one, one food, one food particular that is very famous. It's very famous. Okay? And it tastes really good. I'm just going to be honest. I was a pork eater. I used to eat pork so much. I loved it. Garnita burritos. I just eat them by themselves. Pork rinds. A pound of it. I buy myself some tortillas, some avocado mix, some salsa, a pound of carnitas. And I used to sit there and eat it all. And my health was not good. Not good. And it is proven that pork is very bad for you. No matter how much you cook it. Read up on it. I got scientific proof. But I'm not going to bring it out right now. But I do. How it slowly kills you. So, the next practical thing. Remove pork from your diet. If you're eating it. That's it. And like I told you, I was one that bought a lot of it. And it tastes really good. But as I started to be obedient to the Lord, I don't miss it. I drive by carnita stands and taco stands. I don't miss it. It makes me sick now. To even see that. It makes me sick. And so, that is another practical thing you can do. And your health will get better. When you start eating the way he wants you to eat, your health, your dietary, your stomach, everything, you'll start getting better. You'll start feeling better. Because you're being obedient and because you're eating right. So that's the second thing you can do to start. To start. Those two things. Number one, the Sabbath. Very important. Number two, the diet. You start with this. And so in Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the pig. For though it divides the hoof. Thus making a split hoof, it does not chew cud. It is unclean to you. And any type of shellfish also. We'll get to that next week. I'll be giving you a couple practical things you can do. Okay? So yes, cut out the pork. And read your, read your ingredients. A lot of hot dogs have pork. A lot of things that are, are supposed to be meat. Beef hot dogs. If you read beef hot dogs or chicken hot dogs, you read the ingredients and it has pork in it. Fillers. Get rid of the pork. And you say, why? Because it's a commandment of the Lord. And there's very many scriptures that twist the scriptures. And I'm not, this is not for that, but I can bring those scriptures and I could actually tell you that that's not what he was talking about when he said he makes all food clean when Paul spoke about this. It's not truth. It's not, he wasn't saying that. And then I'm going to show you scripture now. And then we'll go ahead and proceed. And so... And so in Leviticus, okay, so I read Leviticus chapter 11 and the return of our Lord. You can read all of Leviticus chapter 11. You can read all the other animals that are unclean and clean. All Leviticus chapter 11, okay, if you're interested. They are commandments. Isaiah chapter 66. Now, I'm going to just make one statement right before this. 
Not if. We know that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh Elohim is the Holy Spirit. He is one. We know that we know that we know that as a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, that when Jesus walked on this earth, he was sinless. He was obedient. Whose laws are they? Whose instructions are they? They're his. Do you think he was eating unclean? Do you think he wasn't following the commandments? If he broke the commandments, then he wouldn't be our Savior, our Messiah. And then he wanted us to live like him. Amen? Okay. So, Isaiah 66. This is the return of our Lord. This is the return of our Lord. Okay? Isaiah 66 Chapter 15 through 24, and then we'll, this is the last scripture, and then we'll go ahead and proceed. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 through 24. I'll give you a minute to get there. <clears throat> okay, Isaiah 66, 15 through 24. It says, For behold, Yahweh will come in fire and his chariots like the whirlwind to return his anger with wrath and his rebuke with flames of fire. For Yahweh will execute judgment by fire and by his sword on all flesh. What is his sword? His sword is his Torah. His commandments, this is what he judges by. He will execute judgment by his laws. They're his laws. They're his rules, not ours. We don't make them up. Everything that I just talked to you about is his laws, his rules, and this is what he judges by. And those slain by Yahweh will be many. Verse 17, mark it down. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens, following one in the center, those who eat swine's flesh, pig, those who eat pig flesh, Detestable things and mice will come together, all together they will end. So let me read that once again. Those who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the gardens, following one in the center, who eat swine's flesh, detestable things, unclean, and mice will come to an end all together, declares Yahweh. So he comes back to judge those who eat unclean, who eat swine's flesh, that's pig's flesh. The pig's flesh I used to gorge myself on. And this is judgment. This is judgment on his return. Verse 18, and then I'll go ahead and read the rest of this, and then we'll go ahead and commence. So that was verse 17. Look for it yourself, and uh, check it out for yourself. Isaiah 66, verse 17. And I'm reading uh, 15 through uh, 24, so go ahead and read that all in the context if you want, all of uh, chapter 66. And so in verse 18, it says, And I know their works and their thoughts. The time is coming to gather all nations and tongues. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them and will send those who have escaped from them to the nations, Tarshish, Put, Lud, Meshech, Tubal, and Yavan, 
to the distant coastlands. They have neither heard my report nor seen my glory, and they will declare my glory among the nations. Then they shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as a grain offering to Yahweh, on horses, in chariots, in litters, on mules, and on camels, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says Yahweh. Just as the sons of Israel bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of Yahweh, I will also take some of them for priests and for Levites, says Yahweh. For just as the new heavens and the new earth, which I, I make, will endure before me, declares Yahweh, so your seed and your name will endure. And it shall be from one new month to another new month, and from one Sabbath to another Sabbath. All mankind will come to worship before me. Another scripture where he says the Sabbath, 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 forever. Says Yahweh, then they will go forth and look on the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm will not die, and their fire will not be quenched, and they will be an object of contempt to all mankind. Amen and amen and amen. And so this was today's Torah portion reading. Uh, this is what the Lord put on my heart this morning, to start teaching the practical things we could start doing uh, to be raised as a royal priesthood in our families and our communities and get prepared for the Lord's millennial kingdom, his blessed return. And so we're going to go ahead and commence. And I'm just going to read through the portions uh, the prophet portion and then uh, chapter 14 of John, and then we're going to come to the conclusion of this service today. Amen and amen. And so the Torah, the blessing after the reading of the Torah, Baruch Atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim Yeshua, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and planted life everlasting in our midst. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh, Elohim, Yeshua, Noten HaTorah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. And so now we'll go to the prophet portion. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh, Elohim, Yeshua, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words, which were spoken truthfully. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, HaBocher Neve'i HaAmet VeZedek, Zedek, Zadok. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, who chooses prophets of truth and righteousness. Amen and amen and amen. And so we have Jeremiah. Chapter 7, verse 21. If you want to get there, go ahead and get there. Jeremiah chapter 21. We're going to read through chapter 8, verse 3, and then 9, 23, and 24, and then we'll go to the New Covenant. So we'll begin in chapter, uh, verse 21 of chapter 7 of Jeremiah. Yid me Yahu. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, Add your burnt offerings to your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I did not speak to your fathers or command them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings and sacrifices. But this is what I commanded them, saying, Listen to my voice, and I will be your Elohim, and you will be my people. And you will walk in the entire way which I command you, that it may be well with you. So we got to take it to heart. All the commandments, it'll be well with us. The entire way which he asked us to walk in. Yet they did not listen or incline their ear, but walked in their own counsels and in the stubbornness of their evil hearts and went backward and not forward. So number one, everything that he commands us is for what? It says it right there, that it may be well with you. Everything that Yeshua was teaching us, the commandments, everything he was conducting his life according to the commandments, and he was teaching us to do the same, his Torah, his commandments, 
It was because he wanted it to be well with us. Well with us. He wants to bless us for our obedience. And this is what Yeshua taught us. And by the way, Yeshua is Yahweh Elohim. He is one. So this is what we're reading in Jeremiah. Is the commands of the Lord, Yeshua, Yahweh Elohim. But they did not listen. We don't want to be those that do not listen. You're hearing my voice right now. You're saying, no, 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 no. Okay, you can choose to do so. Don't listen. Turn your ear and say, no, the commandments, no, 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 no. You can do that. Choose as a believer. Say, no, don't listen. But this is what it says. Yet they did not listen or incline their ear, but walked in their own counsels. What seemed it was right for them. And in the stubbornness of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Since the day that your fathers came out of the land of Egypt until this day, I have sent you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them to you. Obey, obey, obey. Yet they did not listen to me or incline their ear, but stiffened their neck. They did more evil than their fathers. You shall speak all these words to them, but they will not listen to you. And you shall call to them, but they will not answer you. You shall say to them, this is the nation that did not listen to the voice of Yahweh their Elohim. Please listen to Yahweh's voice. Let us be obedient, children, or receive discipline. So once again, this is the nation that did not listen to the voice of Yahweh their Elohim. So he made a what? Example of Israel for not listening to his voice. He made an example out of them. You must take heed, my beloved. This is the nation that did not listen to the voice of Yahweh their Elohim or receive discipline. Truth has perished and has been cut off from their mouth. Truth, the truth of his commandments, his instructions. And they were what? Disciplined. They're being disciplined. And has been cut off from their mouth. Cut off your hair and cast it away and lift up a funeral lamentation on the bare heights. For Yahweh has rejected and abandoned the generation of his wrath. For the sons, for the sons of Judah have done that which is evil in my sight, declares Yahweh. They have set their detestable things in the house, which is called by my name, to defile it. They have built the high places of Tepheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command them to do. And it did not come upon my heart. Abortion is wrong, it is against the Lord. Therefore, behold, days are coming, declares Yahweh, when it will no longer be called Tepheth or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of the slaughter. For they will bury in Tepheth because there is no other place. The dead bodies of this people will be food for the birds of the sky and for the beasts of the earth, and no one will frighten them away. Then I will make to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land will become a waste place. At that time, declares Yahweh, they will bring out the bones of the kings of Judah and the bones of its princes and the bones of the priests and the bones of the prophets and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem from their graves. And they will spread them out to the sun, the, the, the moon, and to all the host of heaven, which they have loved and which they have served. 
and which they have walked after and which they have sought and which they have worshipped. They will not be gathered or buried. They will be as dung on the face of the ground. And death will ch be chosen rather than life by all the remnant that remains of this evil family that remains in all the places to which I have banished them, declares Yahweh of hosts. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Blessed be the word of the Lord. So many priests and prophets have died. He would send them priests, royal priests, righteous priests, and they will be killed. They would be rejected. He would send them righteous prophets. They would be rejected and killed. He sent them disciples, Yeshua, and they were killed. He's going he's gonna to send, he's going to bring two witnesses. I believe it's Elijah and Enoch, and they will be killed for proclaiming the truth of the commandments of our Lord Yahweh Elohim. They will be killed, just like the disciples were martyred. Just like Stephen was martyred. Following Torah instructions, preaching Yeshua HaMashiach, they were killed. The prophets were killed. The high priest, the Zedekite priest, they, they, they were they were. They were uh, ex uh, executed out of the, the temple, and they were killed, eventually killed also, when that temple became corrupt. They either voluntarily left, or they were made to leave. So let us be mindful of this. And we go to Jeremiah now. Uh, we got two more scriptures. Nine, uh, chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. And it says, Blessed be the word of the Lord. Thus says Yahweh, Let not a wise man boast in his wisdom, and let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not a rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that he is Yahweh who shows loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For I delight in these things, declares Yahweh. So once again, what is his righteousness? His instructions, they're wonderful, they're beautiful, they're very much intended for us to keep. And also, it's one package deal. Loving kindness, justice, his justice, loving kindness, and his righteousness on earth. For he delights in these things. Amen? Amen and amen. And so now we'll go ahead and continue uh, to read John chapter 14. And we're going to end this for today. So the Haftarah blessing after we read. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed are you, O Yahweh Elohim, King of the universe, rock of all ages, righteous in all generations, the faithful Elohim who says and he does, who speaks and fulfills, all of whose words are true and righteous. Faithful are you, Abba Father, O Yahweh Elohim, and faithful are your words, Abba. For not one word of yours is turned back unfulfilled. For you are a faithful and compassionate God, Elohim and compassionate King, Yeshua, Mashiach, Jesus Christ. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua. Ha'el, ha'neaman, bechol, devarav, which means, Blessed are you, O Lord, the Elohim who is faithful in all his words. Amen and amen. And so now we go to the new covenant blessing. And we go to John 14. And then we'll end this service for today. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Eloheinu melech Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, 
who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the words of the new covenant. Baruch atah Adonai Yahweh Elohim Yeshua, notain habaret harasha. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen and amen. And so we read John chapter 14. I'll let you get there. Yohanan, John chapter 14. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Do not let your heart be troubled, my beloved. Believe in Elohim. Believe also in me, Yeshua says. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. This is the new heavens, new earth. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way where I'm, excuse me, and you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you have come to know me, he says, you will know my Father also. From now on you know him and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all so long, and you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak from myself, but the Father abiding in me, does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this will I do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Verse 15, If you love me, Yeshua says, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, another helper, that he may be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him. You know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You will live also. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will disclose myself to him. Judas said to him, not Iscariot, Judas said to him, Lord, what then has happened that you are going to disclose yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. He who does not love me, verse 24, He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Verse 25, 
These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. You heard that I said to you, I will go away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I will not speak much with you. I will not speak much more with you. For the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. But so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. Get up, let us go from here. And so let us be mindful, my beloved, as we come to the conclusion of this service this, this afternoon, this morning afternoon, on this Sabbath day, of verse 31. If you think that Yeshua taught a new commandment, or he brought something new, this is the scripture to go to, one of the many scriptures to go to. This John chapter 14, we talked about a lot about the commandments. If you love the Father, you will be obedient to his commandments. They are the same commandments. And where does it say this? In verse 31. It says, but so that the world may know that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. He was obedient to all the commandments. He didn't bring nothing new. He wasn't teaching nothing new. If anything, he raised the bar. And he calls us to be a royal priesthood, to follow his precious commandments. He taught us how to live them in love because they are wonderful and they're meant for us. They're sweeter than honey, even the honeycomb, just like King David says in Psalm 19 and 119. They are precious. They are meant for us. And yes, my beloved, we will be living as priests in the millennial kingdom and being obedient to his commandments one way or another. So do not lean on your own understanding of what you think is right. Do not do that. He warns us not to do that. Let us not be wise in our own eyes and make up our own rules and our own ways and our own doctrines. So he did nothing else. He only did exactly as the Father commanded him to do. And this is all he taught. And so we go ahead and conclude this service with now with the New Covenant uh, blessing uh, as we finished after we read. And then we'll go ahead and, and end the service with the Tree of Life, the Etz Chaim. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, Yeshua HaMashiach, King of the universe, who has given us the word of truth and planted life everlasting in our midst. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Noten habaret harasha. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant, or the renewed covenant. Amen and amen. And amen. For it is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. Etz Chaim, that means tree of life. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. And those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom, their peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you. Bring us back to your Torah. Bring us back to your instructions, and we shall come. Baruch atah Adonai, Yahweh Elohim, Yeshua, Eloheinu melech haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. Asher natan lanu hadavar hachai b'mashiach Yeshua, who has given us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. Blessed be you, Abba Father. 
thank you so very much. And thank you for being patient and uh, listening to this service. Uh, please share with others. And uh, and so, yes, thank you. I'll, 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 uh, uh, you'll hear back from me next, next Sabbath, okay? Uh, with another little bit of... of um, of um, practical, practical commandments to live by, to start being obedient to the Lord. Amen. Okay, so goodbye for now. And then, so I will talk to you then and uh, and go and have a rest of a restful, restful Shabbat, a restful, peaceful Shabbat uh, to all of you out there.